Hello, I'm a British person, and I think it's about time we look at another movie which objectifies women, don't you? The first, and to a slightly lesser extent the second Legally Blonde movies, had the theme of don't judge a book by its cover, and a ditzy stupid blonde girl really can get a law degree and fall in love with a nice Luke Wilson. Too bad they felt the need to make a third which bears almost no connection, with none of the same cast and absolutely nothing to do with law school. Sounds a bit like Blonde and Blonder to me. Let's take a look. What's with the sped up establishing shot? Is the plane that took it about to crash? Come on Annie, don't be such a slow coach! Kentfield. Not a real place, is it? Nice try movie. We meet our very British protagonists, Annie and Lizzie, and throw about a few stereotypes. You'd think it constantly rained here in Britain. But it hasn't rained for at least... 20 minutes. And the movie does a good job at introducing these not-at-all bimbos as they flirt in order to get a discount. <laughs> Brilliant! You're a natural barrister, Izzy. Even I almost bought your argument. After that introduction, we get our first link to the first two movies. Annie, I can't believe we're leaving for Cousin L's tomorrow. Cousin L, eh? You are the weakest link. Goodbye. God, my references are so 2005. And it turns out their mum is dead. It's a happy kind of film. Oh look, their dad is Ted Beneke from Breaking Bad, with the most stereotypical British accent I've ever heard. The Woods team will fit in the LA lifestyle like... Fish fit with chips. So very British! For whatever reason, the twins and their dad are moving to America, where hijinks ensue, such as driving on the wrong side of the road. Sorry, I almost had you both killed. And they arrive at Cousin Elle's house to the utter shock that Reese Witherspoon isn't there, but she did leave them the gift of dogs. They're so sweet! I wonder how long Elle's supposed to have been gone for. It could have been weeks, in which case those dogs are probably close to death. The girls have a reality check as they try to use their seductive shopping techniques against an uptight shopkeeper. You're cancelled. Why are they surprised that that didn't work? Oh well, doesn't matter, they need to wear a uniform anyway. I've seen videos online which start with images like that. Okay, lovelies, stiff upper lips, and let's see some cheery faces. Eh? Give us a kiss. Ah, oh, thank you. So very British! Apparently, when attending this school, you have to sign a contract. <laughs> Go shopping, ditzy, love boys. These girls don't exactly break the mould, do they? Keep an eye on those two. Why? Meet our bitchy antagonist, Tiffany. Her dad is a Steve Jobs alike who invented phones from the future. And if you sit in her chair, she gets very cross. What do you think you are doing? What a bitch. Brad, be a sport. Sharpen my pencils. Justin, sharpen's three feet away. You know that sound drives me crazy. Okay. Welcome back. I am Mr. Golden, your history teacher. Well, surely the class already know that. Couldn't they come up with a better way to introduce the teacher than have him actually say, I am your teacher? He's played by the bloke from Beethoven's Christmas Adventure. He hasn't had a good couple of years, has he? One of their country's greatest upsets. Would you care to guess what that subject is? How about you, Annie? Uh, the... the... Don't the, be shy, Annie. The, you know the answer. America, England... The, everybody was upset. David Beckham joining the galaxy? Uh, no. That's the closest thing you'll get to a joke in this movie, so enjoy it. Bangers and mash sounds like hurl, is it? How dare you! It's just sausages and mashed potato. How in any way is that hurl? The bitch decides to make friends with the twins and explains that they hate kids in the school with scholarships because they're poor. Best not mention the twins have a scholarship, eh? 
You can tell she's rich because she has a statue in her house and two trampolines in her garden, which leads to... And she's dead. We then see that Annie hates public speaking. Okay, okay. Everybody settle down. Why is the class laughing? Which one are you? Excuse me? Which twin? Iggy or Annie? They really went overboard with making this guy a prick, didn't they? Yeah. Hey, nerd. Get another irritating habit. See? Oh, look, there she is. She only broke her neck. Tea time! So very British! The bitch then finds out the twins have a scholarship. Oh no, what will the evil harlot do with that pointless information? So, until we meet again, which I guess will be tomorrow at the alumni dance? She invites them to a party. Hmm, I feel a sense of deja vu. So the twins arrive at the party and don't question why they're in bikinis on a cruise ship in the dark, and stumble into the party and get all embarrassed. This is just a copy of the scene in the first one with the bunny costume. Except here the girls just leave and get mad. They don't stand strong like Elle did in the first. These aren't the strong female characters the first two movies were about. They're blonde and bloody blonder. Try saying that three times fast. Blonde and bloody blonder, blonde and bloody blonder, blonde and bloody blonder. And what makes things worse is the bitch announces the twins as being the poor, pretty much homeless tramps that they are. Tiffany! Ah, hello loves, you're home early. Hmm, my paternal instinct tells me something's wrong. God blow me Mary Poppins, so very brish! Ted Benneke takes five minutes out from screwing Skylar and gives his daughters a jolly good dressing down. Everybody at school thinks we're lying gits. You are. So they go away and join the other poor kids. This twin also gets jealous of that twin because of a boy. You know, strong independent women. They have barbecues and learn history together and stuff. Does this school teach anything other than history? And they decide to rebel against the school and snazz up their uniforms with a nice shopping montage. I tell you what accessories they do need. These ones. I bet they'd look snazzy in one of those. Which you wouldn't look if you wore those god-awful shoes. And it's nice to see that they're still attempting their flirty technique in shops. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, you win, you win! I'd love to know how long they'd have kept that up for. <laughs> <laughs> Etc. So now they're all rebellious and somehow they have encyclopedic knowledge of the school's rule book, so know how to outsmart the head teacher. Their newfound mojo also helps the lunch lady flirt with the teacher. Are there only three staff members at this school? We also learn that this kid is pretending to be rich as he too has a scholarship. Who gives a shit? I'll go warm up the car. Come on now, baby. Maybe tonight we'll make a little history. Flip and wave always works. So would getting your tits out. For some reason, they break back into the school using a key this kid always has and pass the security guard and pick up whatever the hell this is they forgot for plot convenience. And look, she drops a bracelet which will no doubt come back to bite her in her dumbass. The next day, the bitch sets the cogs in motion for the twins to hate each other. What a nasty piece of work. Time for a test. One, two... No! Or not. See, the seeds have been sown. If you ever get tired of being treated like that, we know some less fortunates who would be fortunate to have you. Less fortunate? He's hardly living in a mud hut, drinking filthy water, starving Adrian less fortunate, is he? The next day, the test is taken and the results given back. But there is a conspiracy afoot. Unfortunately, 
I'm disappointed to have to announce we appear to have cheaters in our midst. Miss Woods, Mr. Lopez, please stand. <gasps> They're hauled in front of the principal and rightly expelled. Or not, because apparently in the rule book it states that you can go on trial and defend yourself. That's just stupid. Expulsion? Did you do this so we have to move back to England? Yes, back to England we go. The dad talks the girls around and they make friends and the poor kids group together gathering evidence. Since when did they learn forensics? All they seem to teach in this school is history. Well, that didn't take long as court is now in session. So this is why it's a legally blonde movie? Because they have to defend themselves after being accused of cheating in a test? I can understand them being the defendants, but why oh why are the bitchy idiots the prosecutors? Why do they need prosecutors? What school does this? So the prosecution present their evidence. The bracelet, the key, the cheat sheet taped below the desk. If this half matches. Why yes. As far as you know. Why are people shocked? Everybody knew that already. Pretty solid evidence, no? And now it's the defence's turn. These two kids have the same backpack. That Mr Lopez and one other pack prep student uses. The council will note that the prosecution has one such backpack under their table. Genius evidence. They realise things aren't going well, so hide under the table. Surely everyone can see you. Luckily, this helps them to see the terrible shoes, and they remember seeing a scuff on the floor of the teacher's office where the test answers were kept. Come on, this is so drawn out. As they head out to collect the evidence, this twin is locked in the toilet. I've given up trying to figure out which one is which. So while this one asks about in the loo, the other one has to step up to the plate, and it just so happens to be the one scared of public speaking. Which, of course, she overcomes no problem. But after her speech about the shoes, the other sister has the photo evidence anyway. Oh, for Christ's sake. Oh, look, here she is to save the day. So the bitch admits to it, and she's expelled, and the twins are okay, and everyone loves scholarship students. So they have a dance, and get with their crushes, and yay. What happened to the bitch anyway? I wonder how she's doing. Oh, I'm sure she's gone to a better place. She died. So that was Legally Blondes, yet another sequel which didn't need to exist. They had to shoehorn a trial in to even make it relevant. Who needs feminism when you've got films like this around? Girl power and all- <laughs> Sorry, I can't do it. 